Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. You know we got coming up later in the program here, Heidi? Tuesdays with Charlie. Yeah, yeah you, you got it this time. You guessed it dead on. You knew exactly who we were going to talk to. Usually I'll ask her, guess who our guest is? And she has no idea. It's like you don't even pay attention right here. <laughs> uh, I've had people ask, why is Heidi never involved in the interviews? Why is that, Heidi? Because I don't like people. <laughs> <laughs> no, she just she doesn't really feel comfortable around <laughs> other people. It's not that she doesn't like people. <laughs> just those people. No, I have no idea what I'm saying. I got a good guest that we're going to be talking to. It is her dad, Tuesdays with Charlie. We'll be chatting with him later in the show. And I got a great quote. George Patton said, I don't measure a man's success by how high he climbs, but how high he bounces when he hits the bottom. I like that. What a quote. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. If you're a business owner trying to do your own website, maybe it's time to get help. Or if you don't even have a website, it's definitely time for help. It's 2018. This internet thing is here to stay. At 49bydesign.com, we offer a simple plan to get you online for just $49 a month with no setup fee. This includes a website with the hosting and domain name included in the price. We have larger packages available, but this will get you online so people can find you in 2018. We're affordable by design at 49bydesign.com. That's 49bydesign.com. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It's Tuesday, the 15th day of May, National Chocolate Chip Day. I didn't know there was such a day, but I kind of like that. I could celebrate that. I, I could, could get too. behind that day. Now, it doesn't say National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. It just says National Chocolate Chip Day. So you could put them on anything. Ice cream, cookies, Pancakes. scoops of them that you just eat out of your hand. Either way. National Nylon Stocking Day today, so you can maybe eat your chocolate chips out of a stocking. You know, I haven't worn nylons for so many years. Me neither. (laughs) (laughs) I don't really wear those. And one last thing on here, National Peace Officers Memorial Day. So all of those things happening on this Tuesday, the 15th day of May. Are you tired of high cable TV rates? Sign up for Dish today and get a $500 bonus offer while supplies last. Plus, lock in your price for two years guaranteed. Call All-American Dish, your Dish authorized retailer now. 800-818-3967. 800-818-3967. That's 800-818-3967. Offers require credit qualification, 24-month commitment, early termination fee, and e-auto pay. Restrictions apply. Call for details. John and Heidi. Coming up, we've got your brain on drugs. But first, White Snake frontman David Coverdale says the band recently completed a new album and then had the entire thing accidentally deleted by a technical catastrophe. Oh, no. Can you imagine that? I've had that where I was recording an interview with somebody. You okay over there? I've got the hiccups. Heidi, I'm trying, I've been trying to scare her. It has not worked. <laughs> uh, I had an interview that I recorded with somebody, and then before I clicked save, the power went out. Remember that? And I was like, oh, no. Did it? Did I save it? I couldn't remember if I saved it. And then the uh, power came back on and no interview. So They probably didn't really have a new album done. Their yeah. <laughs> manager was wondering, where is this album? We just finished it and it Craziest got thing. deleted. Yeah, we just got it completely. We didn't back it up or anything. We uh, have to start all over. Where's your notes? You have the, the notes were on that drive, too. Um, all of the music. We don't even remember the titles of the songs. Craziest thing. <laughs> I wonder if that is what happened. Coming up, we've got your brain on drugs. John and Heidi. Each day at this time, we talk about people doing dumb things under the influence, but addiction is no laughing matter. If you or someone you know needs help, there's a toll-free number you can call. 1-800-438-0380. That's the Addiction Hope and Helpline. 1-800-438-0380. And this is your brain on drugs by now. People have probably heard about this. We even talked about it on the program last week during our fake news or Florida segment. Uh, That's why I had to save this till now, because if I shared this that same day, Heidi would have known that it was a real story. Uh, We do that later in the program. Fake news or Florida. Are you okay over there? I'm sorry. I have the the hiccups. You need to take a break or something? You want to sit in the hall or uh, up the street? (laughs) Well, here's the story. Jennifer... (laughs) <laughs> Jennifer Sue Sunday has become infamous as the Florida woman who dialed 911 to have them fetch her a beer. She's a 54-year-old woman facing criminal charges now after deputies say she placed two 911 calls from St. Petersburg, Florida from her home there. 
to report a medical emergency. When they arrived, the emergency was, I need a beer. And that is not a medical emergency, so she is in a little bit of trouble. And Heidi is. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I'm have. i having a medical, a medical emergency. Em- she needs a beer. <laughs> Just dial not. No, no, don't do that. I guess this lady has done this numerous times, so sad, sad story. But that's what happens when your brain is on drugs. Now, big screen, a little screen, brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. Katy Perry and Taylor Swift have had a little bit of a feud. Have you known that? No, I really don't well, those follow two, either of them. Well, anyway, Katy Perry sent Taylor Swift a good luck card on the opening night of her Reputation Tour last week, bringing an end to their feud that has been lasting for years. I don't know what the feud was about, but it must have been something important because it went on for years. Hmm. Kind of like Heidi's hiccups today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm just, you know, it's kind of funny now. So, You okay, though? I'm fine. You, you just look like you're in pain every once in a while. <laughs> She's trying to hold a hiccup in, <laughs> and then her eyes bulge out. <laughs> um, also on big screen, little screen, Jane Fonda. How old do you suppose Jane Fonda is these days? Uh, 812. No, you were off by a couple of digits there. It was 80 is the ah. correct answer. Uh, Jane Fonda told reporters she's done dating because, quote, She's closed up shop down there, end quote. That's <laughs> what, good to what? know. Who, who asked that? They don't think that was really the question there, Jane. Jeez. <laughs> oh, boy. I did not want to know that about Jane Fonda. I think we're all done here. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-719-5601. 800-719-5601. That's 800-719-5601. Now, your scoop of the day, courtesy of 49bydesign.com. A study by the nonprofit Counter Extremism Project found that terrorists were routinely introduced to each other through Facebook's suggested friends feature. And then the next story here says Facebook is being accused of introducing ISIS members to each other through their suggested friends feature. So I had two different stories from two different places, and I've got both of them on our show notes. Awesome. So there you go. Um, it's interesting, some of the suggested friends that I get on uh, on Facebook. Usually it's people who are like clowns and jugglers and other, you know, entertainers who are just silly. So Are you serious? Thank you, you Facebook. You get introduced to jugglers and clowns? I'm just saying. They, they look for, you know, court jesters and uh, jokers. And I'm being silly. I don't think they... <laughs> I don't think they've ever suggested any friends for me. (laughs) Facebook is like, yeah, we got nothing. Sorry. A survey by livinginternational.com found that a growing number of Americans are moving overseas after they retire so they can save money. So they're moving to countries where the cost of living is less and their American dollars will spend further. They'll they'll go further. Um, I don't know that I would do that. I kind of like it right here. I just don't think I could. I don't know. I don't know if I could get used to that. Usually in places where the dollar goes further, it's because the economy there isn't the greatest and you right. don't have all the comforts that we're used to. So I don't know. That'd be tough. Uh, but I know there, there are a lot of people doing it. And according to this study, it's a growing number of people doing it. A study by Lancaster Research found that Netflix is killing couples, um, we'll just say romantic time, because they're watching TV in bed instead of doing you know other stuff. We do not have a television in our bedroom anymore. We used not to. Not from lack of trying on your part. I have put my foot down and said it doesn't belong in there. There's well, only one thing that goes on in there. We used well sleep is what she's talking about, <laughs> kids. If you're if you're wondering, uh, if <laughs> that's <laughs> you, that hiccup came at the perfect I'm time. I'm sorry. <laughs> she's got. <laughs> do you want to drink something? <laughs> 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 You'd think there'd be some sort of solution by now. Uh, I just can't believe that's still going on. I'm sorry. Um, When we first got married, we had a television in our bedroom. We did for a long time. And then I don't remember when we got rid of the television in our bedroom, but I don't miss it. So for those of you who think, oh, I would never be able to get by without it. From the time I was just a little boy up until, you know, maybe 10 years ago, whatever, I had a television in my room. I don't miss it. We got rid of cable, too. And I don't miss that. So maybe I'm just weird. Um, Do we have time for more? We do. An employee at a Massachusetts gas station. This is such a bizarre story. This was almost my weird news. An employee at a Massachusetts gas station doused himself in gasoline and set himself on fire right before he was tackled by police who put out the blaze. 
what in the world was that all about? Hmm. That happened last week. I just don't understand why. And I don't know. Having a bad day, apparently. Apparently. A British couple received an anonymous angry letter from a neighbor who says he's, quote, sick and tired of seeing you walk around naked in your house, end quote. Well, quit looking in their windows. Really? That is seriously a letter that somebody would send to a neighbor? Would you quit walking around naked in your own house? Okay, but if it's like at night and their windows are open and they have small children next yeah. door and the kids are seeing this, I don't it, know. it could be... You know, I have no idea. All I know is that you is yell at me all the time for leaving the windows. Well, I open. just don't. Yeah, I, I, I think that we put curtains up for a reason. You just close those curtains. That's a. And for those of you who don't like it, on the other side, this British couple, uh, close your curtains. I remember reading a story one time about a lady who called the police and said that you know she was able to see into her neighbor's bedroom. When the police came over, she said, "Well, you, when you stand up on this bench over here." <laughs> so seriously, she she had to stand on a bench to look down into this window. And the police just thought that was funny. That was the whole story. Right. And I was like, wow. So that's kind of what I thought of the second I read this story. But I agree with you. If there's, you know, a situation where there's kids involved. and Yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. But don't write an anonymous letter and mail it to them. Or it might just become a joke like this. You know, a story that's being shared because it's kind of silly. Instead, just talk to them and say, hey, my, my kid's don't need to see that could you guys please either get a robe or some curtains or maybe move (laughs) or whatever you know Uh, who knows maybe we'll get a dear john letter on that subject thanks for listening to the john and heidi show on a tuesday Do you have ideas for t-shirt designs, but you don't have a clue how to print them? Or maybe you'd like to have t-shirts and coffee mugs available to buy online with your business logo printed on them. There's a website that makes it easy. We set ours up in about 10 minutes. There's no sign-up fee, no minimum orders, no monthly fees. It's just a really easy way to put some cool items online for sale, and you get paid every time somebody buys them. You don't have to print or ship anything. Just sign up, upload your designs, and then let people know where they can get your cool stuff. More details available at radiosavings.com. That's radiosavings.com. John and, Heidi. and it's time right now for my favorite program, something we do every Tuesday just because we can. We pick up the phone and we call my father-in-law for a little thing we like to call Tuesdays, Tuesdays with, with Charlie. Charlie. It's Tuesdays with Charlie on the John and Heidi Show. How you doing, Charlie? Tuesday runs around all before work every Doesn't it? <laughs> Tuesday season again. <laughs> what kind of cool stuff are we going to learn about today, Charlie? You like fortune cookies? I do. They're delicious. I love fortune cookies. You know them writers that make and slogans up that print that stuff? I don't know anybody that does that, no. You know how much they make a year? No, oh, how much? Between twenty-eight and 75000 a year. That's a big difference. Well, you, some of them are better writers than some others. <laughs> <laughs> going to sue you. My fortune did not come true. Hey, then how about a pet food taster? Do you know how much they make a year? A pet food taster? There is no way. I, you Hopefully, couldn't pay me enough. Is this a dog or a cat or is it a person that tastes the pet food? Oh, oh. it would have to be over 300000 no, because there's no I way I would do it. I guarantee it's not. Uh, I bet it's probably fifty grand. 40000 a year. Yeah. No way would I do that. No, no way. Somebody would. For about forty grand. Some of that dry stuff's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? I had a hanger for some beef jerky. <laughs> uh, I don't have that, but I got some dog treats. <laughs> I don't even want to know how you know this. Have you seriously tried it, or you just think it looks okay? No, I've, 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 I've unfortunately I've had some pellets once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the occasion? I don't. I don't even want I to I kind of need to know now. What was He's the occasion? probably mixed it in with the meatloaf and Spam. <laughs> <laughs> ruin the Spam. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to ruin the Spam. So wh- when did you have dog food, Charlie? All through the years. <laughs> <laughs> he says that so nonchalantly. As you mean <laughs> on multiple occasions then is what you're saying? You've never stuck a milk bone in your mouth? Um, no. no, I've never done that. You have? I had some time. They're pretty good. Here's what's sad. You're not even doing it for the $40,000. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think your hors d'oeuvres are dried out, <laughs> sir. Those are not hors d'oeuvres. Those are milk bone. <laughs> oh. How about a master... Somalier. Somalier? No, not a Somalian. Not a Somalian. <laughs> <laughs> a Somalier. It's a person who takes swine. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> is that what it's about, the guys that taste wine? Well, they pair food and wine together. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm so shocked that this sophisticated man who eats dog food did not know what a sommelier was. So. <laughs> You guys should drink some wine with my milk. <laughs> Which of these pairs best with Alpo? <laughs> so, is there is there info about the sommelier? Oh. How much they make a year? <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be okay over there? Oh my gosh! Um, it depends on where you are, I suppose. I'm gonna say seventy-five. I would say anywhere 000. from seventy-five to two hundred thousand. They make about eighty grand a year. Eighty grand. Oh. Hey, we guessed pretty close. Um, Heidi would probably do that job for free. That's something I do do. She's a <laughs> she is a uh, an amateur sommelier, <laughs> and, but, and apparently my dad is an amateur dog food taster. <laughs> <laughs> but now I wonder if there are any Somalian sommeliers because that's kind of cool. <laughs> probably are. <laughs> <laughs> well, Charlie, are you ready oh, for a gosh. question for you? Okay. So you work in, many people probably don't realize this, but you work in the automotive industry. How many years have you worked in the car business, Charlie? Since 1967. Okay, so quite a while. So you might actually know the answer to this. And the brand that you, the, the dealership you work at is a Ford dealership. And the question is about this. It says the first Ford automobiles had engines made by who? Dodge. Dodge. You got it right. Woo! Charlie knows his stuff. Well, I you know even a blind sow finds an acorn once in a while. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> You caught us in the right mood today. Somebody been drinking already? <laughs> it's kind of what it sounds like. With She's yeah. a sommelier at a part-time, apparently. So. There you go. Well, Charlie, next time I see you, I'm going to make sure I have some dog treats. <laughs> and I'll make sure I have some wine that pairs nicely with it for Heidi. So. There you go. We'll talk to you again soon. Have a good day, Charlie. We'll see you Tuesday. <laughs> Bye, Daddy. Right. Bye-bye. Bye, Fluff. Bye, John. Bye-bye. My father-in-law right there. We talk to him every Tuesday just because we can. It's a little program we like to call Tuesdays, Tuesdays with, with Charlie. Charlie. John and Heidi. In a world that constantly tells you you're not good enough. 12 easy ways to lose weight now. It's easy to start believing that. I'm Amanda Johnson. I have a new perspective on the self-help genre. My book, Becoming Enough, A Heroine's Journey to the Already Perfect Self, will guide you to find your own happiness. Learn to block out the distractions of what the world thinks and learn to be happy with who you truly are. Becoming Enough, available now on Amazon or learn more at amandajohnson.tv. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Have you ever heard his name is Mud? Yes. You know where that comes from? No. Uh, Dr. Samuel A. Mud was the physician who set the leg of John Wilkes Booth, whose shame created the expression for this. And uh, now when you do something like that, your name is Mud. So his reputation was ruined because he fixed the leg. I don't believe he even knew that he was the guy that shot the president at the time. But that's well, it's that his kind of, job. To... That kind of thing sticks, you know. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Wayne's World was filmed in just two weeks. Did you know that? You can't, you sure can't tell from watching that masterpiece. <laughs> I thought those were gone. It has been. It has been she's, she had the hiccups so far all day. I thought that was done already. But where did that come from? Just out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good news. We're, we're done with our we're done with our stuff. You take a little break. We'll be back with more. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi show on a Tuesday. John and Heidi. If you're a business owner trying to do your own website, maybe it's time to get help. Or if you don't even have a website, it's definitely time for help. It's 2018. This internet thing is here to stay. At 49bydesign.com, we offer a simple plan to get you online for just $49 a month with no setup fee. This includes a website with the hosting and domain name included in the price. We have larger packages available, but this will get you online so people can find you in 2018. We're affordable by design at 49bydesign.com. That's 49bydesign.com. John and Heidi. Time now for the grandiloquent word of the day. I believe we've done this one before, but they just shared it again. So the word is nippy sweetie. Didn't we already yes, do this? Yes, we did. Yeah. Nippy it's sweetie. It's alcohol. It is, yeah. A, a drink of spirits, especially whiskey. A sharp-tongued person, person or peevish person. A sharp-tasting sweet or one which makes the mouth hot. Nippy 
sweetie is the grandiloquent word. Sounds like Heidi's been nipping on the program. <laughs> she, I think you're here. Are they gone now? I don't know. I think they're gone. They, I you haven't guess had we'll one find from, out. Yeah. The last one was a pretty loud one. It wasn't, it wasn't a sneak. It was a... <laughs> it, was, it was quite the, quite the hiccup. All right. This has been your grandiloquent word on this Tuesday. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-719-5601. 800-719-5601. That's 800-719-5601. Now, some weird news for you on a Tuesday. 42-year-old Pennsylvania man is facing assault and harassment charges after allegedly beating his mother with a lightsaber from Star Wars. Wow. Like the little plastic toys. Yeah. Now, when I say this, how old would you guess he is and how old would you guess his mama is? If I was going to say... I would say he's probably in his 30s. And how old do you think mom is? Um, 70s. Okay. Well, you're really darn close. He's 42, which I guess I said already. <laughs> oh, did beginning. you? I did not even hear <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, sorry. Uh, and mom is 75. So this man mm-hmm. is living in his mother's house. Of course. Uh, Loser. The EMS workers had to show up because this lady was bleeding from the head. She had gashes on her head and her wrist. She told police that her son, Andrew, hit her repeatedly with what she called a lightsaber, and that's what it is called. Vargas said that she was sitting in the dining room chair when her son began striking her with a saber to the head and the back of the neck and on her wrist. Mm-hmm. Andrew, who lives in his mother's basement, he again is 42 years old, was arrested on misdemeanor assault and harassment charges. He's being held on $10,000 bail. The rap sheet also includes prior convictions for theft and drunk driving and criminal trespass. Yeah, so, guess who'd be looking for a new place to um, live? Yeah, in a big old hurry. You don't do that. That's just not nice. Not nice at all. Not to anybody, but especially to your 75-year-old mother? No way. You don't do that. Just rude. Coming up, we've got... Your moment of duh, which this could have clearly been that as well, but instead it was today's weird news. John and Heidi. Now, your moment of duh. A private zoo in Alberta, Canada is charged after a bear went to Dairy Queen in the drive through window. So a bear from a private zoo went to the drive through window in the back of a pickup truck. Oh, I was going to say, what was he driving? No, he wasn't driving. He was riding, and they had him in the back of a truck, and then they were posting stuff on social media. The Discovery Wildlife Park and uh, says it shows a one-year-old captive Kodiak bear named Berkeley leaning out of the truck's window and being hand-fed ice cream by the owners of the local Dairy Queen. Now, everybody thought it was real cute, but then somebody decided that, hey, this probably isn't cute. And so, not safe well, at all. No. And then here's the thing. The zoo owner said this, quote, the message was don't feed the bears. Don't. <laughs> j- it gets better. Don't stop on the side of the road. If everybody would listen to the video, that's what the message was. Don't uh-huh. do this. Yeah. Oh. Don't do this. You don't, don't do, do a this. video. And it's hey, 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 don't Dairy do what Queen. we're doing. Now people are like, hey, let's pick up that yeah, bear and take it to Dairy Queen. They think that looks Queen. like fun. Yeah. Wildlife officers Bad have charged idea. the zoo with one offense. Uh, related to this bear ice cream uh, thing, and then another one that stems from a bear leaving the facility back in, uh, let's see, 2017, I guess. Discovery Wildlife Park uh, is scheduled to appear in court on the 28th of May. So there you go. I've got a link to the story and other stories in our show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. John and Heidi. In a world that constantly tells you you're not good enough. 12 easy ways to lose weight now. It's easy to start believing that. I'm Amanda Johnson. I have a new perspective on the self-help genre. My book, Becoming Enough, A Heroine's Journey to the Already Perfect Self, will guide you to find your own happiness. Learn to block out the distractions of what the world thinks and learn to be happy with who you truly are. Becoming Enough, available now on Amazon or learn more at amandajohnson.tv. Now, fake news or Florida? Tell me, Heidi, do you think this really happened or am I making it up? Okay. A Florida woman tried to rob a fast food restaurant of $50 but drove away empty-handed when they told her to get lost. Fake news or Florida? Florida. Florida, that's true. 
And the, the, I don't have the lady's name because, you know, she drove away. But it says when the employee asked her what she Just wanted. get out of here. Okay. She said, I have a gun and I want money. And she said, how much money do you want? She said, $50. The employee then said, get lost. Close the window. <laughs> and a very confused woman drove away. <laughs> I don't know if I can suggest that you do that because That's the next awesome. person might actually, you know, shoot or something. That could be bad. One last story here. Fake news or Florida? Florida uh, police in Florida charge a man with open and gross lewdness after witnesses said he tried to pee on them over a dispute for a cab. Fake news or Florida? Florida. Florida. That is true as well. A highly intoxicated man uh, tried to pee on some other people who were trying to get into a cab they were fighting over whose cab it was and that seems like a rational response no it doesn't that's a bad idea <laughs> you don't, don't take do. a man's cab no but you don't <laughs> you don't do that this has been fake news or florida thanks for listening to the john and heidi show john and heidi. this portion of the john and heidi show is brought to you by the john and heidi show that sounds kind of funny but it's true go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the john and heidi show here's the best part they can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news, and I think this is good news. It's courtesy of Odiva, the monthly subscription service just for the ladies. All the details at radiosavings.com. Here's your good news headline, Heidi. This portable 3D printer could print skin over wounds in under two minutes. How cool is that? That's amazing. Yeah, so so they, for like burn victims yeah, and stuff? Well, like if you get a cut or whatever, it says, thanks to this latest breakthrough in 3D printing technology, skin grafts may soon be a thing <gasps> of the past. Instead, physicians could heal those injuries by simply printing out a new sheet of skin right there on the spot. Researchers at the University of Toronto have developed a handheld 3D print uh, skin printer that can quickly manufacture fresh skin tissue that could cover and fill a wound in less than two minutes. That is so amazing. The team believes this could be the first contraption of its kind. I think so, too. I've never heard of it before. The device, shaped similarly to a packaging tape dispenser, except instead of tape, it's skin that's coming out. Uh, it's all made on a protein-based biomaterial that includes collagen, the most abundant protein in the dermis, and fibrin, and a protectant, a protein rather, that's involved in wound healing. The printed material could penetrate all three layers of your skin to properly heal your wound. Holy so, cow. I've got a link to the story if you want to know more about it. I think it's just really cool. The technology that's out there is amazing. I love it when they're using it for this kind of thing right here. Oh, Yeah. But there are other times you'll watch stuff and you're like, why are we, why are we wasting our time all on of this? the time and resources? This is for brilliant. This some of the I love. weirdest things. But yeah, this is so cool. And uh, if you've ever known someone who needed to have skin grafting mm-hmm. done, that is such My a dad, painful. Tuesdays with Charlie. What, he did? Where did mm-hmm. he? On his leg. His leg. It? Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you he ever have to. He was burnt when he was like three. If you've ever had to go through that, it's a very painful process. Not only do you then have, you know, a. a place somewhere on your body that hurts from whatever the reason was for the skin grafting but another place where they removed your skin right. also hurts so this is just a cool idea i've got a link to that in our show notes at john and heidi show.com time to say goodbye heidi goodbye heidi goodbye everybody have a great tuesday thanks for listening to the john and heidi show